Hey guys, so um, yesterday I started to experiment with cyanotypes for the very first time and I was not going to make a video but uh, then I had so much fun that I thought that it was necessary to share it with you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, let you know step by step what I did and uh, yeah, maybe uh, this will work for you as a sort of tutorial. I've been wanting to learn cyanotypes for so long, like maybe five years or something like that. As soon as I discovered that they existed and I've been wanting to uh, do one by myself. But I uh, just, uh, yeah, you know, time passes and sometimes you want to do something, but it's not super important. So you never give it the time. Uh, but thanks to this YouTube channel, I've been able to uh, do so many things. <laughs> I'm marking my checklist one by one, so that's amazing. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, so I bought this cyanotype kit. This includes two chemicals. In the case of this kit, you have to fill each bottle with water and then you have to shake it uh, for a while, uh, wait 24 hours, and then it's ready to use, okay? All right, so once you have your chemicals ready, you basically have to mix um, chemical A with chemical B. Uh, you need one part of each. Try to estimate uh, how much you are going to use um, so you don't waste chemicals, all right? So now you need a brush. I use these foam brushes because um, they came uh, along with the kit. And also you need watercolor paper. I had two types of paper. Uh, one of them is thicker and it has more texture and the other one is a little bit thinner. In my experience, the thinner paper and with less texture work much better than the other one. Maybe if you are going to uh, experiment with flowers or with objects, the other might uh, work better. I don't know, uh, but at least for photography, uh, I think the thinner one worked much better, at least for me. I just started experiment yesterday, so uh, I, maybe I'm not the person to give you advice about it. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, so now you have to put this chemical in those papers, use your brush for this, and once uh, they are ready, uh, you have to hang them in a place uh, as dark as possible. I just put them in a place with no direct sunlight and that was good enough. Once they are completely dry, they are ready to use. All right, so firstly, you have to pick your image or images and you need a software to turn them into black and white or to desaturate them. After that, I recommend to increase a little bit the contrast. I didn't do this with all of my images and it really made a difference. <laughs> The ones with more contrast work much better than the other ones. So increase the contrast a little bit if you want optimal results. <laughs> then you just have to invert the colors and adapt the image to the size that you want your cyanotypes to be. After that, you just have to print them in these transparent sheets. These are a special kind that work for laser printers. Do not put any type of transparent paper in your printer because you can ruin it. <laughs> there are sheets for canister printers and sheets for laser printers. And I personally don't have a printer, so I went to a place to print them and the guy knew exactly what I was talking about, so uh, there was no problem. All right, so now your watercolor paper is dry and you have your negatives. So you just have to put the negative on your paper and put them in the direct sun. Yesterday, it was a cloudy day. First, I started to expose them uh, for 15 minutes and it wasn't enough. Then for 30 minutes and it wasn't enough. And I ended up uh, exposing them for one hour and that was the correct amount of time for a cloudy day. Today is sunny and in the morning, I put them for 30 minutes and it worked pretty well. So uh, basically it depends on the amount of sun that you have, but I recommend you to uh, make some trial and error and see what works for you and what you like better and what you don't. But after that, you just have to put the sheet of paper into water and you can add white vinegar if you want more detail. I added the vinegar and it 
makes the difference. Um, and you have to put them there and shake it a little bit for uh, five minutes. And then you hang them, let it dry, and that's it. Oh, and by the way, this process paper can be uh, saved for about six months after you uh, paint them with these chemicals. Just make sure that they are in a dark place. At least that's what the instructions of the kit I bought say, because I haven't tried yet. And that's it, that's the whole process. If you notice uh, in my results, some of them work, some others uh, are not very clear. Um, I think that depends on the amount of time and also on the quality of the negative that I use. So remember, <laughs> use a negative with high contrast. And yeah, that's basically it, it's super easy and I hope you enjoy it and maybe you can try it or maybe you have already tried it. <laughs> Let me know your experiences with cyanotypes, uh, if you are interested in it or not. Um, I personally found it so fun. And yeah, I cannot wait to try it with objects and other types of negatives, and maybe with other materials. I have um, read that you can use it with fabric too, and that would be super interesting. I have seen very beautiful scenes uh, that use cyanotypes, so um, I would love to do something like that. Uh, let's see if I improve the technique and I can do a bigger project with this. That would be amazing. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was uh, interesting for you in one way or another. It was a little different from what I usually do in this channel. And yeah, have a great week and see you in the next video. Bye bye.